Howdy everyone, nice to see you and all again, well to see you, just to be with you. And I'm going to show you today how to use some junk mail envelopes, such as this window envelope, and turn it into a tuck spot for some of your journals. So in this particular envelope I had ripped open here, I'm always pretty careful as about how I rip them open, but I've glued it down just using a glue stick simply because I want to have options. So the next step now, I'm going to take my scissors. Oh, there they are. Oops, a minute, I've lost my scissors. And I'm going to just cut through this envelope, through all these um, two pages that they are here. So I'll get one pocket here and one pocket on this side. And if you don't cut 100% straight, don't panic. Just aim your scissors in the direction that you want to go. So now I've got two halves, and you'll see that each half here has a little opening. So having glued that side down, I've got now two nice neat little pockets. When I've done this, I'm going to look at decorating them, and I'm building up some um, ephemera for a garden-themed journal. So I've been working with some old book pages, and I've been working with a piece of wrapping paper from a soap. I just love this watercolour feel and I've got some watercolour um, images of a piece of wrapping paper that go quite nicely with that style. Be careful about mixing watercolour images with something that is like a photograph where the images are quite crisp and sharp and this has got a softer feel because you're going to find that it's very difficult to blend those two together unless you've got a little bit of skill. So those I've chosen quite carefully as being similar colours. And then I had some old book pages and I had some scraps of napkins that I'd been working with. And a long time ago I just sat and glued all these little bits and pieces onto the book pages, never knowing what I was going to do, and they're coming in useful today. So this particular one is just the top layer of a napkin. You'll know that napkins have either two or three ply, and you need to separate them, otherwise the top layer won't glue down if you're putting the glue in contact with the bottom layer. Quite often when you've got two ply serviettes, um, your second layer will just have a hint of colour or of an image, and I've glued that down as well, because sometimes the book page on its own is a little bit stark. Um, let me show you that as opposed to that. You've got a little bit of, of colour there, so it just works for me, um, and it's something that's a mindless activity that I can do from time to time. So the first thing I'm going to do is to start to layer up some images so that I actually have a surface on which to um, do some inking. I want to incorporate these colours and I want to incorporate the book pages and of course the book pages are the least interesting so I think I'll start with those because I don't mind if I cover them. We're building this up in layers and the layers will just add interest to the work that you're doing. So. I prefer working with a glue um, stick for this because it is not as sticky. Having said that, if you have something like gel medium or matte medium and you want to work with that, it's absolutely fine. So I've applied the glue now and I'm just going to wrap the edge over. I like to work like this. I'm not going to obviously see the back of this, generally speaking, because this might be glued onto a page, but you could obviously decorate both sides if this was going to go into a little pocket of some sort. But by wrapping it over the edge, I don't get a raw white edge. I've got a little bit of colour there, so that's my logic for that. So just randomly, I'm just taking some pieces of book page, some with print and some with art, and I'm going to adhere those to my surfaces and just build up my layers. Building up layers is really important um, because you want it to look as though things are seamless rather than just everything on top of each other. So, having said that I build up layers, I'll show you what I mean by that. I have a little black ink pad and I have a couple of stamps. I've got this lovely little Indian block um, which is hand carved and I'm just lightly dabbing ink onto this so that it's not heavily loaded. I want a sort of soft inking. And I'm just going to do a couple of rough impressions of this. You'll notice that it's got a slightly leafy kind of design to it. And this will really tie in with my garden theme. So by putting this down, I'm just actually creating another dimension to the surface. And then I've got this peculiar thing. It's just a wine cork with I glued a metal button on. Now the metal button itself is not flat, so it's not going to print very well. But it does give rather interesting patterns. And I quite 
rather fond of this, I must say. So I'm just going to roll this along, give a few little lines here and there, perhaps rub it. It's got a slightly darker impression than the others. And what I'm doing essentially here is to just break up this large white surface. Make sure you always go to the edges in some spots as well, otherwise the edges will just jump out at you later on. So we'll come back to that, we'll do some more of that in a minute. Now I'd like to introduce some of the green that I have from this piece of soap wrapper. And I just, as I say, I love the colours of this and also loved the soap that it was and I wish I could get some more. But that was when I was living in South Africa and I'm not there now, so <laughs> it's all rather difficult. Anyway, happy memories of this lovely soap that we used to get and um, it's going to be part of a journal. So let's find a space for this. Pop that down. And don't worry if, you know, the edges are torn. It just actually is rather nice. It softens itself into the background and it means that your image is not too hard. So on the second one, and I'm going to work with these side by side, I have a piece of book page that's got that second layer of the napkin and I'm going to glue this down as part of my initial surface. And again, I'm just layering these things. I try to work with two or three maybe types of things. So I've got the soap wrapper, I've got the book pages with the napkins, and then I also have this little box with all the different um, wrapping paper images that I have torn up. One of the things that you learn if you do painting, such as watercolor painting, is don't lose all the white or the light areas. So you'll notice on this particular one here, I've left a little bit of white there. I could put some ink over it, but I would still not use all the white. And it's rather nice because that highlights the colors that you're working with. So let's just put this one at an angle, maybe. And I have these napkin images that have berries on them. I don't really want to use them whole because the image itself then is quite demanding. So I think I'm just going to tear that into strips just so that I get a hint of colour and maybe I could use that up at the top like that no, on the side I think, okay, on the side so just because you've got a whole image it doesn't mean to say that you need to use the whole image you can break it up um, essentially that's what mosaic is, isn't it? lots of little pieces placed together on a surface to form another image when I was teaching mosaics, we had a lot of fun because quite often people would have had um, a family heirloom of some sort. It could have been a cup and saucer or a tea set and that unfortunately got damaged or broken and we would take those little pieces and start to make them into something new that was usable and a nice way of hanging on to the memories. So this is a little bit similar to that in the sense that we're taking little broken pieces and we're tearing things up and cutting things out to to make something new. I'm going to introduce into some of these pages now some of the bigger images that I want to use, these watercolour ones and I think I mentioned to you that I prefer the soft edges of torn paper because as you glue them down they don't leave you that ridge that um, a piece of cut paper does. So I'm just going to position some of these images. Um, you're probably screaming at me as to which ones you would like. That one I want on top so I'm going to hang on to that for now. I do have wording that I tore off and I could use this. You'll notice that I separated that from the images because I'd like the option of being able to position it elsewhere. And by being able to position it elsewhere I can create something new. So I've got the long handled trowels and this one says shears. So, I think the shears we can put somewhere else. Um, let's just see. Maybe in that little spot there. Right. Then, I think what I'll do here now is just to start to add some more colour from my book page. Um, this is quite nice here. Just a little bit of that deeper orangey colour, but I don't want big solid chunks now, I want the design to be kept light, so just doing some thin strips. 
don't be afraid of tearing things up, you know. I know, I remember once I taught this most beautiful, beautiful Indian lady how to do collage, and we were doing it with magazines, actually, and um, she really had a huge difficulty in tearing out pages of a magazine, even though they were years old, simply because she had, as like most of us, been brought up never to damage books, and she felt that somebody else would be able to use them. And ultimately, we couldn't persuade her that these would someday end up in the rubbish dump. So she decided she'd rather do her collage with fabric, and it was absolutely beautiful. But that mindset that we were taught to respect books and things was just so ingrained that she didn't really, um, she just couldn't do it. She just really couldn't do it. She'd rather tear up a piece of fabric. So. Yeah, sometimes we can't overcome some of those things, and that is absolutely fine. That's your journey. The next person's journey is different, and they'll say, Ah, yes, let's look at it from whether it's going to be made into something new, or whether it's just going to end up in landfill, and the next person can switch gear and make something delightful. So it really is a personal thing, and thank heavens we're all different. You'll notice this one is just a piece of white paper, but it is a slightly different color to the white of the envelope that I have here already. So I'm going to use some of that. And one just plays until you feel that you've got a happy surface underneath. Um, I don't know if I want this big postal thing here, so I'll just kind of blotch that up. Now I'm going to go back in with my little stamps, and I'm just using the same two stamps. Remember, not too heavy-handed with the ink. But I'm just going to soften up some of these papers that I've already put down here. And I know that when I'm doing this, um, you're not seeing the softening up that well on camera, but I will lift it so you can see. And it just breaks up the image so that it looks as though it's been part of what was underneath. So if you have a look here, you'll be able to see that that just links everything together on that particular one. And the same here where I've stuck the little spades and things. Now I've got some bigger spaces and I think I'd like to introduce some of my bigger images. So I've got this lovely one with the bird and I think I'm going to pop that down here. Oh hang on, I've just seen something. I've seen this piece of second ply of a napkin and it's got green and I think under that little um, basket that the robin's sitting on a little bit of green would do quite nicely. Let's see how that plays out. Um, if I do that and that. Yep, I think I'm going to do that. So let's screw this one down quickly. How's your week been? We're very lucky it's turning into, well, it is spring at the moment. And the trees and the blossoms have been absolutely spectacular. I'm just amazed at how beautiful all the trees are and all the blossoms on the trees. I'm loving that. Um, in South Africa, a lot of the trees just had very, very small, almost, yeah, almost non-existent flowers. So we didn't have this real show of colour and I'm really enjoying that. Every day when I'm off to work, it's just beautiful. <laughs> and it's been a couple of months of just this beauty, so it's truly spectacular. Right, so one of the things that I have here is that I have a couple of straight lines and I want to break those up. So I'm going to offset my little basket so that it hangs off the edge here and off the edge of that so that it doesn't have all the straight lines lining up. I think that would be a little bit too much. And then I think I'm going to take a little bit of this green that I have here. Um, don't want a hard edge really is about just playing and letting your eyes guide you. I know initially people battle to do this kind of collage work, but you'll find it's a bit like riding a bicycle. The more you practice, the easier it becomes, and very soon you'll be quite okay with it. No, I'm not happy with that there. Let's pop it in the corner. That's looking a little better. And then for this one, I do have a lovely image of flowers, which I think I'd like to pop 
the, oh no, I think I've got it over here. Lovely little pots of flowers. You know, if you didn't have a sheet of wrapping paper with these things and you do paint and you've got just one of those basic sets of watercolours, there's nothing stopping you from just quickly doing this, but just be careful of the glue. Okay, let me say that again, but just be careful of the glue, because the glue you use, if you're using a liquid glue like gel medium, um, that might dissolve the colours. If you want a fixative for watercolour, then you can just spray it with some hairspray or with some artist fixative, and that will set the colour so that it doesn't come off when you come to the gluing. So just be very aware of that. I've just put in here now, oopsie, I'm really sticky. Just put in some of this dark plummy colour just to counterbalance that. And I'm going to introduce a bit of the orange. And I'm really using tiny bits now just to get some colour in. Right. Liking the way this is looking, but I do feel I need a bit of green on this one with a bird. And I think I'm going to go back into my packet here with my soaps. And just take some of this leaf here, but not as big. So I'm going to tear this up a bit more. Just pop some of this here. And maybe one more. I'm just tearing these up. Even though the wrapper is imperfect, it's actually going to be fine once it's all stuck down and you can see what I'm doing here is I'm kind of letting the leaf images come in from the top almost as if it was a branch of a tree where the leaves have been overhanging and I might just might just do something with this branch let's see if I can lift some of the color out right. is it all glued together oh no there's a little bit all right that's a better color Sorry, I'm really being funny here, but I don't have any more of this paper, so I just wanted to incorporate this. There we go. I'm happy with that. And let us have some gardening gloves. These will look good. And we'll pop these over here as a... Somebody just ran in to get a cup of tea. Okay, so I'm liking that. I'm going to come in now with more ink. And I'm just going to use my funny little button template. Blend the basket in. And don't you just love these little patterns that have come onto the basket just from this very simple little button that doesn't print perfectly okay so I hope you can see that I'm going to incorporate a little bit more of my leaf just maybe one or two and then I'm going to take my little ink pad and I'm going to ink all the way around the edges so have a look at it now and you'll see that it looks as though it's floating in space and the minute I start to ink the edges it's going to look as though you have been to the picture framers and bought a mount in a frame to put around your image and that's what this inking does it just brings everything together makes you focus inwards rather than on the outside all right so I've inked all the way around the edge but I do want to have a little way to open this nicely so I have my circle punch here I'm just going to turn it upside down and insert that roughly in the middle. I don't want to go too far down because I don't want to chop off my little bird. Punch that out and then I'm just going to ink the edge of this as well. Oopsie, all fingers and thumbs right now. Right, so I'm happy with that little one and for this one I think maybe it just needs a little bit of colour in this spot over here. Or I have got this that says Weekly Planner. So if I tore this and split the wording, I think I could make it work. Let's see what happens. 
Weekly. Okay, I think we're getting there. Alright, so don't be afraid of doing what I've just done, is splitting up a phrase. That's also fine. I'm just going to let it lie over here. I'm going to do one or two little spots with the ink, just to link that together there. And one or two of these little inking bits on the leaves. And now I just need to ink around this larger section of the envelope. And I'm just doing this very lightly. I'm not making it terribly thick. So as I mentioned to you earlier, that these I plan to actually glue down into a book. If you were going to have these as a tuck spot or you were going to want to have them loose so that you could insert them into something, then obviously you would need to decorate both sides. So just bear that in mind in your planning. Okay, inking all the way to the edges. And again, I think I'm just going to make a little notch so that it's easy to grasp if I can find my punch. Slide that in, just use your eye to gauge that it's equidistant. I'm going to lose a bit of my flower but that can't be helped. And then just remember to ink the surface as well. Right, one of the other things you can do is just to ink around this window that you have. And it's a little trickier to do, but if you open the envelope so that you can kind of just catch the edges, you don't need to have it very dark. You will get a little bit onto the window itself, but that will wipe off quite easily with a baby wipe. But I just think it actually anchors this as well. I'm just going to do this with my finger quickly. Right, and I've seen a nice little burst of colour here. Let's include this. I think that, oh, I'm really sticky. <laughs> I'm really sticky. Let's put my burst of colour up here. There we go. All good. All good. Maybe I need a burst of that pinky colour on the opposite side of the envelope. Let's just do a little one of those and then I think I must stop. And there does come a time when you have to stop. <laughs> Otherwise, you really find that you're just messing around too much and you can ruin it. Okay, that's rather nice. So, let me show you what I did earlier as well. I made another one of these. And into this I've just put some A6 paper that I've dyed myself. I dyed them with watercolours. And those would be nice as journal cards. I know that people do quite a lot of decorating of journal cards, but I like to be able to have something that I can write on. So that would be a lovely size to make a journal card to go in there. Or you could just do a week's planner. Or if you wanted to um, put something else in there other than these journal cards, um, you could have any kinds of tags to go in there. Those would work. Um, I've also been making a whole load of little swing tags for things. You could pop some of those in there to decorate them. And for the ones that have windows, you could just choose a nice design or a photograph or an image to pop through there. So I hope this has given you some inspiration to get cracking and start looking at things that are lying around you that can be used in your junk journals. I'm just going to spread some of these out so that you can get a better idea of what they are. And then you can see, so just two envelopes that we had to start with. And we've managed to make a whole load of lovely things for a junk journal. Thank you so much for joining me. It's been great fun. See you next time. Bye.